This is a solution of an impulse response for the temperature control lab. We are going to calculate an analytical solution to the response and then compare that with data. There is the link here that you can follow along with the source code or the results if you need the solution. And the very first thing that we want to do is just generate some data. So we're going to use this script right here. Don't forget to not just copy it, but come down to the bottom and use the get code link. And that will give it to you in raw format. You can create a new uh, Python file. I'll do that just by opening up IDLE and then select new file and then paste that in. And then we can save it somewhere where we can run it. I'll just call this generate data.py. Alright, we're going to go ahead and run this. And if you're connected to the temperature control lab, it will start and uh, start collecting data. And then it will turn on the heater at uh, 10 seconds. And then it'll start to heat up. But while this is going, it's going to go for about two minutes. Uh, we'll go ahead and just calculate an analytical solution to this impulse response. So if I look at uh, impulse response is what we're doing in the heater right now. At 10 seconds we turn on to 70 percent and then continue for a period of one minute or 60 seconds. And then we turn off the heater and we want to see the temperature response over this time period. We're going to use a first order plus dead time model that we reviewed earlier in the class. And we're going to put this in terms of deviation variables, where the prime means that you are uh, subtracting the steady state values or the nominal conditions. So we're using this uh, script here to generate the data. It's just running through a loop and inserting the different Q values that we had. All right, there are Q values is sleeping for one second and then just appending the new temperatures. And then it's going to save it as a CSV file, a data file. And, uh, and then we'll be able to generate a plot. Now if you run this script again, it looks to see if you already have that data file available. If you have it available, it's just going to read it in and it won't collect the data again. So you can use that when you're adding the analytical solution below. We're going to use these values for KP, Tau P, and Theta P. We could also optimize those, but in this exercise, just go ahead and use those and compare the solution with the data. So the solution is that we're going to, oh, it just popped up. The data. We're going to go ahead and close that and then use it later. All right, so the solution is that we're going to run through uh, with this differential equation. We're going to start with the differential equation right at the top and then take the Laplace transforms to get an analytical solution. All right, so just starting, we're going to take the Laplace transform of the one on the left. Okay, so we had tau p dt prime dt okay equals minus t prime plus and then we have kp times q1 and that is t minus theta p we're just going to take the laplace transform just of this very first one and that gives us um, this expression right here where we have s times t of s minus our initial condition because that's in deviation variable form that initial condition is going to be equal to zero and so that is just tau p times s times uh, ts now if you need help with these uh, you can just look these up in laplace tables that i also have on the course website um, let's just go down to the derivative values Okay, so here is the Laplace transform of the derivative of a variable. That's just going to be equal to s times 
that variable in the Laplace domain minus the initial condition. In our case, that initial condition is zero. All right, um, going back here, um, we're gonna take the Laplace transform of minus t prime, and that just is gonna be equal to t of s, minus t of s in the Laplace domain. Now the next one is a little bit trickier. We have a delay in here, which is uh, theta p, and uh, this is just going to be kp times q of s times, and then if we want a delay, we have e to the minus theta p s. And so that is again found in the Laplace tables with um, the delay term right here. If you have a delay in a variable, then it just is equal to e to the minus whatever that delay is. In our case, that is theta p and then times s, and then times the original uh, variable. In that case, uh, in our case, it's q of s. All right, so we've transformed all three pieces of this, and then we just put it back into this algebraic expression where we've transformed uh, this overall differential equation into an algebraic form in Laplace domain. And then what we're going to do is just collect all of these t of s's onto the left-hand side of the equation and separate it and do some algebra to get t of s as a function of q of s. So now the thing that we need to do is you know, come up with an expression for q of s. As you saw up above, we went up for one minute, starting at 10 seconds and then ending at 70 seconds. So this step up is going to be, okay, I'll just go ahead and do plus, uh, plus 70 right there. That is just going to be uh, e to the minus 10 times s. And then that is going to be multiplied by 70. So that is a step up. Um, and I'll do 70 divided by s right here. Okay, that's going to be our step up. And then our step down is minus 70 divided by s, e to the minus, and then that is going to be uh, 70 seconds later. Okay, so that's our step down. So q of s is going to be equal to 70 divided by s, e to the minus 10s, Okay, and then I'll just do minus, and then e to the minus 70 times s. So I'm going to plug in this expression right here into this equation, and then we'll do an inverse Laplace transform. Now that we have everything in terms of s, we can do an inverse Laplace transform to come back to our original uh, our solution, our analytical solution in the time domain. So let's go ahead and just do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just write out this expression. T of s equals kp. I've given you the values for those. Tau p s plus 1. And then I have e to the minus and this is going to be 15s. I said 15 seconds for the time delay. And then we're going to multiply by 70 divided by s times e to the minus 10s minus e to the minus 70s. All right. And then um, if I take these two and combine them, e to the a e to the b is going to be equal to e to the a plus b. So this is going to give us, in simplified terms, it's going to give us 70 divided by s times kp divided by tau p s plus 1. And then I have, let's see, combining these together, I'm just going to have e to the minus uh, minus 25s. 
Okay, minus e to the minus 85s. All right, now I can take and do an inverse Laplace transform. I'll go ahead and do it of this right here, and then I will apply the time delay to each of those. Um, and then that comes up with uh, t in the time domain is going to be equal to 70 uh, times kp. All right, and then I have, let's go back to the Laplace tables and just look for that one. Okay, so I need to find this one in the Laplace tables. All right. Um, it just went right by. I was looking in the left column, but I should have been looking in the right. Okay, there it is right here. It just is disguised because I have some extra constants in there, the 70 and the KP. But I want to get back to that time uh, in the time domain. And then I will apply, as a very last thing, I will apply the time delay for me. I'll just go back this way. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I have 70 times kp times 1 minus e to the minus t divided by 25. And then I will have minus... And I'll apply my time delay in just a second. 1 minus e. Um, oh, I should have done tau p here instead of 25. Okay, e to the minus t over tau p. All right, and then when I apply time delay, I just subtract the time delay here, minus 25, and then minus 85. And then I multiply by a step function that starts at 25 and one here that starts at 85. All right, so this is going to be in deviation variable form. If I want to just do it in um, regular temperature form, I just add the nominal starting condition. All right, here is my analytical solution right here. Let's go ahead and just put this into the code so we can compare it. Um, here I have the original code that we used to generate the data. And what I'll do is just uh, develop the analytical solution here where I have uh, the number of time points. I'll get just get the length of time. Put in my KP value, tau P value, and uh, let's go ahead and do the T1S here, that's going to be 70 times. Maybe I'll get this off to just the side so I can continue to see this. Um, KP times 1 minus E to the negative. Okay, the time minus 25, and then divided by tau P. All right, let me make this just uh, extend this just a little bit. I need to get my step function in here. S1, uh, that's going to be zeros, and then it'll go to 1 at uh, time step 25. And then also for S2, I'm going to need that one as well. That one's going to start at 85. Okay, so I'll just multiply that by S1, and I'll subtract, and then continue on, and have the same thing in here, um, just by S2, and put in 85 instead. And I need to add the nominal uh, condition. Now I'll add that to the plot down below. Put in T1 simulated, or the analytical solution with the blue dotted line. And then I'll make that uh, labeled. And let's go ahead and run this one. I should have the data there already. Uh, so let's go ahead and just close this out. And I will run this with IDLE, but you could run it in Jupyter Notebook or any other environment. Okay, so here is my uh, measured values that I got, and then the predicted values. I came up with an analytical solution to uh, the differential equation with this impulse response. We had a Q uh, equals a step up, 
and then a step down. And we were able to compute an analytical solution and compare it to the data.